Hello, people of YouTube! My name is Steve Gray, and thank you for watching. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, leave a like, and feel free to comment down below what you would like me to do in future videos. So today, I want to talk about a very interesting and kind of weird guitar Gibson made a few years back from 2011. Uh, keep in mind, this is kind of the uh, Rosewood being scarce era, so Gibson is kind of looking for different types of things to do at this point in time. And the guitar I'm going to show you is, um, there's actually several, there's a Les Paul style and, and a Flying V, and an, I believe an Explorer in this, in this um, uh, type of guitar too, is it's one of the cheaper models. Uh, this guy right here, I'm going to show you the front and back, is a... 2011 Gibson SG Melody Maker um, does not show anything on the headstock. Some of you may be thinking it's fake because of the weird headstock, uh, but keep in mind this is a cheaper model guitar. Uh, one pickup, I don't even know if it's wax potted or not. Um, no two pneumatic bridge, this is just a wraparound piece like they did with the old Melody Makers, and I kind of will explain how everything works here. So the weird thing with this guitar is I want to talk about the specs. So on most SGs, you would expect an all mahogany body. Um, this particular one, and I believe most of the Melody Maker series, they're actually maple bodies. They are undersized, uh, they are thinner, and the bodies are made out of all maple. So this is already weird because usually maple is like a maple top on a Les Paul. Uh, this particular one, you can see the seams, and you can see some of the grain through the paint. Um, this is a two-piece maple body. Um, going on to the neck, the neck is going to be your standard mahogany. Uh, no grain filler at all, and you will feel some of the grain if you're looking to purchase one of these guitars. Um, but the next thing that is really weird is the fretboard wood. It is called, I believe they call it like um, tempermized or tempermented um, maple, but basically the gist of what it is, is it is the equivalent of a roasted maple for a fretboard. So you're going to get a little bit of that spank of maple, which is not typical for most Gibsons. Uh, this is probably a very experimental guitar for Gibson. Um, I say that because this is where it kind of looks like rosewood, but it's not rosewood. You don't, there's actually really no grain in this at all. You can't see the grain in it too much. Um, yet again, this was when Gibson was making the guitars, um, basically they were dealing with rosewood issues and government issues for getting rosewood illegally. Uh, the pickup in this thing, also kind of weird, uh, this is the only guitar that I could actually find that I'm aware of. It is called a 491, not a 490, 491T pickup. Um, what kind of annoys the crap out of me about this is even the cheaper Ebiphones guys, uh, they have a cloth around the pickup. This one is like freaking scotch tape. Like that, you, 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 this was, I think, a five to six hundred, I think it was about a six hundred dollar guitar, brand new. Um, and honestly, I don't see why anybody would pay six hundred dollars for this. You got one pickup, you got one volume knob, you don't even have a two pneumatic bridge. Um, the finish work is so freaking thin that just me tapping it against anything is going to show bare wood, which is not good. Uh, the pickup doesn't sound too bad, I will admit that. Um, I've seen a few go for sale for a whole $35, so it is not a very desirable Gibson pickup, let's just put it that way. Um, headstock. They decide, basically, most Gibson headstocks are like, a lot of them are now, I see are three pieces because they have the curve, you know how they look. Um, and this one, they were just like, nope, we're not going to add those extra pieces of wood. These are Gibson Deluxe uh, Clouson tuners. Uh, however, if you notice, the knobs are just some sort of cheap plastic. Um, I've heard a lot of issues about intonation with this guitar and fret nubs. This particular one does not suffer from fret nubs, which basically means you, you run your hand down the neck and the ends of the frets are stabbing you in the hand. I mean, you can feel them maybe a tiny bit, but it's nothing that I'm going to do anything with. If you look at the paint job on the side here, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it, uh, but it is all over the place. I don't know if that's because this guitar is used and this was rubbing, but to me, it just looks like they just kind of slapped the paint on there the best they could. Um... I also don't know if this was from factory, but there definitely is a noticeable kind of like divot right 
right here. And I don't know if I need to condition the fretboard. To me, the fretboard doesn't even really look that dry. Um, maybe I will throw some lemon oil on there, uh, some Old English to brighten it up to see if that helps it swell up or anything. But I honestly do not know. Um, it was kind of cool that Gibson did the whole uh, toasted maple, roasted maple, whatever the heck they actually called it on the guitar. Um, because it looks like rosewood and you can still oil it with like, like lemon oil. So it's not a sealed board like Fender does. Um, so you don't have to deal with, uh, you know, all of it wearing down, etc. Stuff like that. Another complaint on this guitar is the pick guard. The edges aren't very rounded. So it is kind of sharp hitting that. Like it doesn't hurt, but it, there's a big old fat noticeable lip, especially on the pointy parts. Oh God, the bridge. Let's talk about the bridge. The guy that's, that I bought this from set this up, so I didn't really have to do anything besides raise it a little bit because it was buzzing. Um, but basically, here's your adjusters, you know, high, low. Um, and, to, and to adjust the intonation, uh, there's a little Allen key. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm going to try to line it up with my lens here. Uh, but basically, you use an itty-bitty Allen key, and it pushes the entire bridge forward or backwards in order to get... Uh, where it needs to go. Now this is a specific top wrapped bridge. Uh, that is correct. It needs to be top wrapped. There is no getting around it um, because you can, if you put it through the bottom, it's just going to be slamming into the pickup. However, which also is annoying, there are no grooves. So you are just, you know, wherever the string wants to go, the string is going to go. Um, and that's all I really have to say about that. Getting cleans out of this is a little difficult. Um, distortion sound isn't too bad, but, um, I definitely like my Les Paul Studio a lot better. Playability, it's nice, it feels nice, you know. It's got that, uh, nitrocellulose smell to it. Um, the good thing about buying one of these is, uh, you can actually find these for fairly cheap. Um, I've, there's a few I've seen go on Guitar Center for around $400, and typically you're not going to see one of these over $500. Bucks. Um, but... A lot of people are just looking to get rid of them because nobody wants to buy them, and you might even be able to find one as low as $200. Uh, that's actually what did I end up paying for this guitar. Anything that has a Gibson on the headstock and somebody's asking $200 for, it should throw some red flags up. I'm just going to say that. But uh, something like this, um, where there's not a huge market for it at this point in time, unless it's just you know some younger guy like myself who wants to say he has a Gibson, um, that's really the only market there is for it. But without further ado, I am going to give you guys a quick little demo, and that will be the end of this video. So thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you will. Well, I hope you all are enjoying the uh, the terribleness of the cell phone tower interference in the background. Uh, the nut on this, I believe, is called a Corinth nut, um, which I need to lube it because I am already having issues. Uh, this is going to be one of those nuts where you might want to just replace it um, or just keep it lubed up and you shouldn't have an issue. Um, I'm on the clean channel right now. Uh, let's look at my settings. Uh, let's see, the low about four, the mid is about a six, my high is about a six, and my pre and post are right around two on the PV6505 Plus. But uh, I'm just going to play a few chords for you, and then I'm going to switch it to a more distorted sound where this guitar actually shines. <laughs>
So yeah, there you have it.